Hey, good morning to you. Welcome back to the Higher Grounds Podcast. Thank you for joining Brother Matthew and Brother Michael and I on today's episode. We appreciate you coming by and giving us uh, just a little bit of your time. I know your time is valuable, but what Michael has to say is very important. So <laughs> we, we want you to hear Boom, everything the, <laughs> the old man has to say. <laughs> yes, sir. How you doing, Mikey? I'm doing great, brother. How are you? You know, I'm, I'm, yes. Yes, sir. You're here? I'm doing. You're here? As much as I'll ever be, I guess. <laughs> right. Well, when you ain't here, you won't, comes. you'll be there. That's right. Um, no, I'm okay. Um, I think. Mm-hmm. Nobody's told me different, Matthew. And so I'm hanging in there. Like a hair in a biscuit. I'd rather be in heaven, but right. since I'm here, I'm going to be all in. I hear you. I'm all in. We're glad you're in. I'm not sure that you meant that, but, but I'm <laughs> glad you in, said man. it anyway. How's uh, the Seagrove place? Doing great, doing great. Yeah, man. Last couple of weeks, we've just seen a lot of folks returning and uh, got a lot of visitors coming. So you know, feel like we're on the other side of the COVID. I won't tell you what I said about you the other day. Oh goodness! I gracious. said it to a friend of ours. Hang on one second. You may want to ask your small children to leave the room. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> this is live. <laughs> this is live. This is live. Oh, we're on live TV. Live okay. Television. All right. Go ahead. Live on national. We're we've, out of. We're no longer on local TV. <laughs> no, we're on national TV. We're national now. Yeah, we, <clears throat> we were wide, friend. I've give the the TV anchor spiel about you know mature. So go ahead. So here's what I said. I said to a friend of ours. I mm-hmm. said. Brother Michael Poindexter, it gags me to say it now, but it come out really good. I said, he is a, he's a good man. And I said, he's the kind of guy that 20 years from now, folks are going to know who Michael Poindexter is. Now, he will have forgotten my name and my phone number by then, <laughs> but people are going to know who the man is. I believe that. Now, after you said all that, then you said, but let me tell you something about Brother Mike, right? I really didn't. <laughs> okay. I didn't. No. I mean, I was. Saying, I'm waiting for a punchline. No, I've been no, punched no... so much on this program. I was waiting for a punchline. On the line. program. You're right. On right. the program. On the program. It's true. It, off the program, I treat you very kind. That's true. That is true. Yeah. I've, I've been very good to you. This I is a dog and pony show. A lot of people don't realize this. We'll this is a dog and pony show. Just the yeah. Dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> get the people what they want. <laughs> that's, right. that's right. Give them what they want. Yeah. And kill the man. <laughs> yeah. On the air. That's right. That's right. Flash, flash, no, Cornell. But I do appreciate you, and I appreciate you helping us out. Yes, sir. And uh, being faithful to, to show up. My pl- <laughs> <laughs> I thought she was going to bring up that bad problem with them meditations, you know, that, but you've, you've been no, pretty no. relaxed I mean, on there for a while. There's some things you just have to, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm a sick individual. Okay, you understand that. I got that. So I like to watch on YouTube where those doctors go in and cut them tumors open and push them out. You Dr. Pimple mm-hmm. Popper. Yeah. Now, you like it too? I watch it on TV. I'm telling you. So Only when Lion King ain't on. <laughs> <laughs> Akuna, my what? You got a title. <laughs> you, you ain't got a song for us. I told him, I said, today, do Tom and Jerry. He said, well, Tom and Jerry don't ever talk. I said, exactly. Yeah, that's exactly right. Wonk, wonk. So how you doing there, Matthew? <laughs> I'm, I'm on, That's I'm right. That is he is. That's right. He's doing good. He's, he's feelings hurt. Nah, not Matthew. He, hmm. you, you, are you sensitive? We're I'm gonna sorry. do a we're gonna do a, a podcast on emotionalism one of these days about how we you know we hate it and we figured you'd be the best for that. I'm emotional. Are you? I can I'm tell all your face on the morning minute meditation. You look like you just ate a persimmon. I try to be serious sometimes. That's not serious. That's morbid. Well, I'll tell you what. It's hard doing the morning minute meditation. Well, sometimes well, he do show- it in the morning. Do it in the afternoon when you're awake. <laughs> sometimes he shows up like a hot dog. Sometimes he shows up like a donkey. I mean, yeah. he, the man no, shows that's up. That's not the morning minute meditation. Oh, okay. That's, that's the morning, morning minute, Mary Mary minute meditation. Is that it, Mary? Yeah. You haven't sent me any of those in a while. I know. We ain't got no good. I got to find some good filters. Hey, was that youth camp last I just, week? I don't smoke filter. <laughs> I don't like it. That's what I'm saying. I don't non-filter. You right. die faster. Right. I got you. you die faster. Yeah. Was at camp last week? Brother Melton wanted some preachers to preach during the devotion on the Tuesday morning service. And so he's going around, and I, I like how he asked us to preach. He asked for us to preach, and he said, Brother Matt said, I want you to give us a little word this morning. He said, do like you be doing on the High Ground podcast on the morning minute meditation. Uh. And I thought maybe he just wanted like a, all of us two or three minutes. He said about ten minutes. That's a long that's meditation. A, that's a long meditation. Yeah, that has to be like a three parter, wouldn't it? Yeah, three yeah. parter. Don't, don't send that one to me. Yeah. No, huh? <laughs> that wouldn't even post. No, it wouldn't. It wouldn't post. But I have enjoyed your. I'm I'm serious. The stuff you bring to the table is really good stuff. 
Mm -hmm. All alliterated and such. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you ain't got to have nothing really much to say as long as it's alliterated and it's like, (laughs) they think it's deep. (laughs) When I looked, I mean, I'm listening. I said, it's Matt's voice, but it sounds like John Phillips. Yeah. See? See? He's speaking uh, speaking in the pathetic. (laughs) (laughs) Not the prophetic. Not Not the the prophetic. The pathetic. 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 I got you. Right, right, right. Hey, I want to talk about something today. Hey, before you do that real quickly. Hey, we got a shout out. I need to give a shout out. And uh, when I was preaching in Maine and up there in Revival Meeting, which a few episodes ago, I believe we talked about the cups and everything that we still have on on set. And uh, But but met a brand new friend, uh, a young man just freshly saved. His name's Reggie Mitchell. And Reggie got introduced to the podcast maybe a few months back and is like probably current on his episodes. I mean, went back and binge watched the whole things, the whole thing. But Reggie... Reggie sent each one of us guys a coin, and embedded in that coin is a mustard seed, and it was a reminder of the faith of a mustard seed and the whole premise behind that, and uh, really, really cool, really cool. So, Reggie, thank you so much for the contribution, and uh, I got it around here somewhere. I might have spent it. That is right. You, you, need to have, you need to have the kind of faith where you got to see something anyhow. Well, I gotta have faith of mustard seed. Right, a grain. I've got it. I've got it. I got it with me. I got no, no, no. I've got the coin. (laughs) I got your coin. I got your reminder, Reggie. I have not lost the coins you sent. I've got them, so it's all good, brother Reggie. Thank you so much for your (laughs) kindness, and thank you for uh, representing Maine. I love the state of Maine. Yes, their their state bird is a mosquito, (laughs) and I love that (laughs) state bird in Maine. If you ever get up there, they will eat you alive. Oh yeah, Brother Bo said he had, like, had to like had to spray his yard to keep the flies and stuff away. You know, stuff like that right there. They eat him alive. It's pretty neat. I mean, not neat like I want to see that be there, but I mean, it's still kind of neat. There's some good fishing in Maine. Yeah, I heard about it. Man, there's a good place good to eat up there. Good hunting in Maine. There's a good place to eat up there. That's your pastime. Yes, it is. Yeah, I, for the first time in my life. I ate a dish called lobster mac and cheese. Talk to me. It's delicious. You know I can't eat it. Why can't you? The gout. The cracker. The sailfish. Oh, man. I'm so sorry. Me too. Yeah. I'm just getting off of a three-week tour mm. of gout. No way. The day's first day, I felt probably 80%. And you ate fish? And what's... I ate a shrimp, probably 12 pieces of shrimp. Within two week period, and those twelve pieces of shrimp crippled me for three weeks. Man, mm. I'm sorry, brother. I am too. I like the stuff. You like you like fish. Yeah. Fish is good for you. I, you know, I'm not I'm not like you guys are. Now I can eat like freshwater stuff, like my uh, trout or whatever. Mm-hmm. But the seafood from the sea. You like that stuff? I, well, it's okay, but I mean, it cripples me up bad. Wow. Gout. That's the only way I'm anywhere even close to Charles Spurgeon <laughs> is suffering from gout. Yeah, it ain't for your whiskers. No, it's not for my whiskers. <laughs> not at all. Nor is it for my ability to write. No, or no. For my ability to communicate. Right. Um, it's just because I got the mm-hmm. gout, and he does. And depression. Depression. That's the other one. You and, yeah. Me and him. Uh, man, the documentation about his story in that regard is, is pretty phenomenal. It is. Had some it is. Deep battles with it. You know, we, we want to discuss his life sometime down the line. Mm-hmm. You know, there were a lot of controversies that surrounded him. Oh, yeah. Difficulties. Friends turned their back on him, and, mm-hmm. and he, had, uh, he had a lot of difficulty. But amazing, all of the things that he, he was able to do and accomplish. Yeah. Um, even as a even as a man tormented by a lot of different things, and um, we want to talk about his life in the future. Several other lives we want to talk about in character series is in upcoming episodes. I didn't ask about the the heights. How's it going? It's going good. Yeah, you just yeah. had a revival meeting. We did. Yeah. Yes, sir. Three went, days, Monday, Tuesday, good. Wednesday. Yeah, it went good. Y'all yeah. got revived in three days? Well, I don't think so, but we had what we call a meeting. <laughs> Some preacher told, one, per, one preacher said, y'all need to quit announcing revivals because people will start suing y'all for false advertising. <laughs> <laughs> That's encouraging. Yeah. Yeah. So we I had, we had meet, wasn't one of your members. We had meeting. <laughs> we had three days of meeting. It was pretty yeah. good. We went good. Had Brother Stroud. Brother Mark Stroud, yes, sir. He's uh, a great uh, preacher. You he know is, that? He is. He, uh, Monday and Tuesday, Wednesday, but Tuesday was real. Tuesday, he kind of preached our church about some things 
that we have been I've been preaching over the past several months and uh, kind of this kind of some of the same things and and so it was really good really good to our church there so it was really good amen hey I want to talk today uh, I didn't mean to cut you off there you by fine? The way. any new songs that you've learned recently that you want to just back off just back off of that brother Matt just back off you don't want me to I've been you, you mean we're going to go on you want me to say it I don't care what you think. I'm just oh, trying you just to, want to let it go. I'm just trying to help you. He's trying to help you. Let, 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 let it go. Leave. Y'all want to let it go? Y'all just want to let it you go. You ain't getting that, are you, brother? Well, Andy? I mean, are you, are, you, are you receiving a lot of feedback from... Well, I'm telling you what. I'm signing autographs. Are you? People are excited about the Lion King. Are and I didn't know you can make that much money in cartoons. How about that? Yeah. yeah. Well, now you do. You actually made a little... No, but I'm hoping that is P.O. Box 15 Jefferson <laughs> South Carolina 29718. <laughs> You're going to get a bag of coffee anyway. Probably. That's hilarious. Yeah, some coffee. I'll sell yeah. coffee. <laughs> yeah. So your new song? Let it go. Let it go. <laughs> he said that. Frozen. I've watched Frozen 1. I've not watched Frozen 2 yet. Let it go. No. I can't hold it back anymore. <laughs> <laughs> You're not getting it, man. He's been alluding to that for like the last two or three minutes. That song, well, Let so It I Go. I never watch. I don't watch You don't cartoons. know what you're missing. You, you got to you you get the punchline. My lines. favorite character is a snowman. <laughs> On Frozen. Yeah, I forgot his name, but he's my favorite character. <laughs> what is his name? Uh, I don't have a clue. Is it Soloff, Olaf, Roloff, Roloff. <laughs> it, it wasn't Roloff. I promise you it wasn't Roloff. Is he flying a plane? <laughs> <laughs> he's got a carrot nose. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I told you. We might want to move on. Is that what yeah, you just let it, just let it go. Yeah, just let it go. Are we going to have to have Hannah do some editing? No, 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 no. no, no, no. no. You can leave all this in there. As long yeah. as you stay seated, yeah. <laughs> don't, don't jump don't up jump like up. I did don't before. Like did last time. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Just stay seated. Let it go. Let it go. <laughs> <laughs> so what we want to talk about today is anger. So you can't get mad watching cartoons like that. <laughs> you quit That's watching the news and start watching cartoons, you won't be so mad. <laughs> and that's what we call a. Segway. Segway. Right. One of those. One of the things you ride in. We that's just exactly in. right. We just rode in <laughs> on the Segway. That's right. You got on the right aisle with that one right there. So when, when we're opening up the Word of God, uh, one of the very first things that we run into is anger. Mm -hmm. uh, when you get to chapter number uh, three, you, you have Cain and Abel and the situation with Cain and Abel. And Cain uh, getting upset with God, um, he takes his anger out on Abel by slaying him, uh, and his brother's blood cries to God from the ground. And when you begin to walk through the Word of God, you find one person after the next who have anger issues that they're dealing with in their emotions and the the adverse effects of that. Everything from, of course, uh, Cain all the way down to... Uh, King Saul, and there, there are many others that we could make mention of. Um, have you, in your pastorate, dealt with anyone, Brother Matt, who just really could not wrap their, wrap their, their uh, temperance or their self-control around the emotion of anger in their yes, life? Sir. And what was the <clears throat> adverse effects for them, lasting adverse effects? It, almost a church split. Had got to almost, almost throwing punches in the sanctuary on Wednesday night. Mm. At, at, at church. At You've church. Seen that happen. Yes, sir. At church. That would be the third time that I had dealt with the anger issue from certain individuals. And uh, as a matter of fact, the, the gentleman had got so mad when the other gentleman went to to apologize to him, it made him matter. Just because the other guy was really sincere and remorse and trying to apologize for things escalating the way it did. And that made the guy more matter. More matter, matter, more mad. He, more mad where he was already at. That it, that's what caused. That's what actually almost called the blows of the fist. And and it was. And I don't want you to give specifics, but was it over something very minute? Yes, sir. Small. Well, yeah, to an extent. But I mean, it's always basically over money most of the time. But it, it was some some to the effect. Yes, sir. And those those folks that dealt with those outbursts of anger, are they still in the church? No, sir. Yeah. I've had to deal with it um, from a church disciplinary uh, position yes, because of not just anger, but public outbursts of anger yes, that became visible to others in the congregation. And, uh, you know, this is an emotion 
that is built into the depraved nature, uh, our Adamic nature. Yeah. And there is a righteous anger. The Bible is very clear to tell us that we can be angry and sin not. And we're not to let the sun go down on our wrath. And the Bible talks about, you know, a righteous indignation over sin. Uh, and the, the way to be angry and sin not is, in my estimation, to have that anger focused on uh, sin and what sin does in humanity and combat it by way of the gospel. In your ministry, Brother Mike, tell me some of the things that you have seen, and you may not, it may be case sensitive to where you can't give a lot of detail, but some things that you've seen out of human beings that you've uh, you've pastored or been in the same church with. Uh, that that have, have brought problems. I think I've seen you know people get angry. <clears throat> excuse me. Um, maybe because of being offended, and and it may never lead to a lashing out. It may never lead to a, even a retaliation. But that anger that they felt over being offended causes them to number one build a wall, um, which will not allow someone to get their transgression right. And I've seen that anger cause them to withdraw themselves. You know what I'm saying? They really have a, have 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 as contrary of a scriptural response to the ang- to the offense um, as, and that's as bad as the offense itself, whatever it may be, because all, God's ultimate desire for us is restoration. So I think when it comes to anger, that's the thing that I've seen some, and and, and there are there are some people that because of it's an anger issue, it may never show in their disposition or in an action. Um, but but they don't look at people offending them the way they see themselves offending God, right. and so you know you sometimes know, even the way they see themselves offending other people. Yes, even. yes, they can offend God with a sin and go and, and just you know go right back and, and and get right, repent, and everything's supposed to be okay. But they will not even let other people. Uh, who've offended them have that opportunity, and it's an anger issue. It really is. They get so right. angry. They have a Cain type feeling toward a brother, though they would never see that because you know Cain's a bad guy, and uh, you know he's probably harsh, and, and you know. But I'm not. I'm, I'm. I'm very. I can be very reserved, and still just really be eat up with anger. And that's the way. I'm not. We've not had lashing outs and uh, nothing. You know, as extreme as Brother Matt um, uh, described all ago. I think it would be good for this. Will be a, a, an episode that will be watched by a lot because this is something that different people have different views on and deal with differently. I think one of the greatest things we probably could do is settle the question of this is anger a sin go ahead anger is is a sin depending on how it is focused okay uh, as we said earlier in the in the uh, podcast I have had to deal with I in my ministry I've had to deal with uh, what you say I disagree but that's go ahead fine. go ahead I mean you can disagree we we don't always agree on no that. most time we don't but go ahead um, but uh, one of the things that I've seen here is I've seen people that have gotten angry with other individuals in the church, and instead of dealing with those that anger that they have, Mm -hmm. um, and one of the reasons why they don't deal with it is because they really do realize how petty they're going to appear to be when they have to deal with their problem. Mm -hmm. And instead of dealing with it, they they now are suddenly led by God to find a new location to go to church yep. instead of dealing with uh, the sin that's in their own heart because of how the revelation of that sin is going to make them appear to be. Right. And, uh, I, you know, when you, when you open up the Word of God and the Apostle Paul is writing the church, this is one of the things that he deals with in a replete fashion with different churches about the anger. He deals, of course, with Corinth about it in regard to the divisions that they've got going on, mm-hmm. in regard to the the litigation that's going on between brethren. That, that boils down to an anger issue over a a perceived, um, you know, debt or or right. business transaction, but in in the um, in the book of Ephesians four and thirty one, he said, "Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice." And the synonyms that he used conjunctively 
with anger are these. He talks about wrath, which is it deals with raging anger. He talks about clamor, uh, which deals with anger that is you know s- spoken and muttered about. Evil speaking, which deals with the uh, talking about of the taking out of vengeance because of anger. He deals with uh, malice, which is the burning rage of anger that drives a person to take another's life or to become physical or verbal with the anger. And then, of course, he he starts off by talking about it in regard to bitterness. Now, these are definitely not necessarily in order of how anger attacks and then evolves in a person's life. But one of the greater outworkings of anger, if it is not flushed from the emotional system and the spiritual life of a man, has to do with the rage of bitterness which is the only sin that is mentioned by way of the Scripture as having a root. And that root system of bitterness then begins to defile not only that individual and right. the person involved, but many people are now adversely affected by that anger. He goes on to Colossians to say the same thing. Put away, put off all these anger, wrath, malice, filthy communication, blasphemy out of your mouth. And then he talks about moms and dads, or dads primarily provoking children to anger. Mm -hmm. So in regard to that, putting off of those things, um, have you seen people successfully try to do that or just... You know, he knoweth my frame, he remembereth that I'm dust, and this is the way God made me. The only way I can answer that question would have to be spin it back around to why I disagreed earlier sure, go ahead. about, you know, your position on anger. Um, I, I believe that anger is, you know, in and of itself is not a sin. And Correct. the reason I believe that is because in the same passage you just quoted about, you know, uh, let it be put away from you, uh, about five verses earlier is where he said in verse 26, to be angry and sin not. Right. I believe it is a natural emotion that you experience from time to time. I believe here's what dictates whether or not it becomes sin or not. It's kind of like the whole um, uh, scenario in the book of Proverbs, answer a fool according to his folly, answer not a fool lest you be like him. I mean, it's all kind of, you know, uh, situational. And when it comes to anger, I believe it comes down to this. You know, Mark 3, 5, Jesus was angry yes. in that particular setting. And of course, there was no yes. sin in that. If you're angry, number God's one, angry with the wicked every day. Every day, God right. in the Old Testament, God was a very wrathful God from time to time. Right. Um, but it, if you're talking about anger, how do you how do you justify or how do you classify it? Um, it's going to have to be according to what are you angry about. Is that is it justifiable that you're angry about that? God was always angry with sin, and that was justifiable. Jesus in Mark three five was angry at their reaction to what was going on and helping the one who needed to be helped. Right. And then lastly, what do you do with your anger? Yes. Because it's, in the it's book manifestation. of... manifestation. Yes. In other words, uh, if I'm angry at a, another man, it gets, it gets to be sin if I lay hands on that man. If I let my words fly and become degrading, if I harbor that and become bitter, then that anger has become a tool, adversarial tool working against me. Why the Bible says make no friends with an angry man unless you learn his ways. You don't right. want to, you can learn those emotions, you know, and, and the reactions to it. So I think anger is one of those, um, we would call it like you talk about music or, or even letters or words, uh, what is it, amoral, where it means it has no attribute, good or bad. What you do with it makes it good or bad. So I think that it's, you know, there is some righteous indignation we're told to have from time right. to time over right. the right things. It needs to be something justifiable. It can't be an excuse for, as in my family, you know what I'm saying? Right. Um, I'm Irish. I'm Irish. Yeah, so we have tempers. <laughs> uh, and then what do I do with it? I, I, now, you asked me a question. So leading up to that, the question was, repeat it again so I'll make sure I answer it right. Oh, I'm not sure. Okay. I think you asked had I seen it as an adverse uh, area in somebody's life, or was that what you asked me earlier? I was talking about in the church. In the and, church. And dealing with people in the church. Okay. Not as much there. I think I probably touched on that a little earlier. I think um, one thing I would say about anger is this. A, a lot of times, people who struggle with it more has a lot to do with your disposition, the way you are made up. I, I was, um, as a young man, I was high strung, very high strung. Um, and I, I, I did struggle with anger as a young man. And I did, as a lost young man, I would... Uh, 
act wrong or lash out when things uh, upset me. You know what I'm saying? Getting saved and getting the Holy Spirit, that started being checked real quickly and often. You know what I mean? And over time, I've had to learn how to re-channel that feeling if it rises. And I think, and here's what I say to everybody, you know, if anybody else there has ever struggled with it or knows what I'm talking about, um, we pray things like, Lord, don't let anything happen to make me angry. But God is going to allow stuff to happen and sure. teach you to submit to the Holy Spirit of God, control your tongue, control your actions, and not let your anger turn to sin. Well, That's part, the only way you'll get victory over A part of adversely um, working against anger is the development of patience within an individual. Sure. And the Lord said we have need of patience. Mm-hmm. And if we have need of it, then there, it does no good for us to pray that God not allow us to have any situation that's going to make us to be, you know, to have to develop patience. If right. we have need of it, then through God's sovereignty, He is going to put us in situations where patience must be, has to be developed mm-hmm. in our life. Matt, would you, as a young man, and of course you, you, you're fairly cool, calm, and collected, all that I've known you. Did you struggle with temper or any of that as a young man? I did. I, I, mine was resentment to my parents. Uh, rebe- I was real rebellious when I, when, before I got saved. And a lot of my anger, a lot of my anger would be built up like temper. Like, I don't know if you can say the difference between anger and temper. Uh, but I would, I would, like most people say, they would blow up. You would take in so much, absorb so much. And then it would be, you would actually do things or say things you would regret. And there's a lot of things that I said to my parents now uh, that I regret. And so I've learned that anger is, is, is easier swallowed than eaten. Mm-hmm. And so when, when, when I would get, like when I, before I got saved, my, my parents was real strict. I didn't know it at the time, uh, but it, it worked out for the best now for my parents to be strict. I couldn't I couldn't go where uh, and my my mom and dad wasn't churchgoers, and uh, I didn't get I didn't get saved. I was seventeen, and so up until that point, I didn't understand why when everybody else were doing and going, I couldn't. And so when I was twelve and thirteen, that didn't matter a lot to me. But when I got in high school and trying to fit in with the crowd and be cool with everybody else. All that stuff would build up until I blowed up. And then when I blowed up, I was grounded for a month, kicked out the house, said things I shouldn't have said, and it's a life of regret. There's a lot of things that I've done uh, done when I when I was growing up at 16, 17, before I got saved that I wish I wouldn't have done or regretted doing. Right. Were you, you were, of course, your mother's gone now, but she you is. were able to make all those things oh, yes, square. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, me and my daddy, up until uh, I got saved, really didn't have a good relationship because mama was always the one that would try to say yes, and daddy was always the one that said no. And so I looked at the situation, bad cop, good cop. And so there's a lot of times that me and my daddy didn't get along. And uh, now that I'm saved and I'm grown, there's a lot of apologizing I had to do. And uh, from that from from that standpoint, and uh, but I wouldn't be the man I am today if it wasn't been from parents that would, you know, that would that would take the time to raise me and my brother. And you'll never you'll never be able to be the Christian you need to be until you right those wrongs that anger has caused between yes. you and other individuals. Mm-hmm. You can't just uh, hope that it disappears or hope that it goes away or even just start. 